Hello everyone, this is Chelsea from Those With Words. Welcome to the channel. In this video, I am going to share with you a fun comparison between my older journals and my more recent journals. I was just curious the other day while I was flipping through some of my old notebooks and I realized that some of my styles and the way that I approach things have changed quite a bit over the years. And so I just wanted to share that with you today just for a fun look back at some of my old pages and what has changed over the years. I should note that for context, I've been journaling creatively since 2017, so early 2017. I'm just showing you the Traveler's Notebook inserts today, but I actually started out with a Hobonichi Spring Start in 2017, so that was really the beginning of my creative journaling journey. And maybe I will share that notebook at some point. I have not flipped through it in quite some time, but it is in my storage, so I will maybe get to that at another video. But today I'm just going to go through my memory keeping journals from various years as well as two of my travel journals. So let's go ahead and get started with the memory keeping journals. This one I have previously shared. So this is my most recently completed memory keeping journal from this year, from January through March. So this is just in the Traveler's Company collaboration refill with the Superior Labor. And I shared this flip through before, so I won't go into too many details, but yeah, it's filled with different ephemera and tip-ins, postcards, paintings, when I felt like drawing, and such and the like. And then these two, and I have some pages that are marked here with a fun panda tab that I want to get into a little bit later. These are my older memory keeping inserts. This one is from 2017. This is my very first memory keeping insert ever. And it looks like I took about a year to finish it from July 2017 to June 2018. So that's kind of fun. And in this particular one, I had tracked my creative process. So my blog was a lot more active back then. And so I think I used this as kind of like a to-do list for my blog and just my creative um, journey. I think I was just starting Instagram at this time as well. So I just wanted to share some journaling content and a lot of this, you'll realize, is very simple. I think I maybe had about 10 washi tapes at the time, maybe. <laughs> I can't quite remember, but it was a very small number of washi tapes. And I did things like this as well. So this is a different alphabet stamp than the ones I use now. But I made a list of 10 things on my wish list. And I thought this was quite fun to look back on because a lot of these I actually do have in my collection now, thankfully. For example, the Shachihara alphabet and numbers stamp sets. I definitely have the alphabet one and the numbers one. I actually don't know if the number stamps I have are Shachihara, but I do have similar looking ones. I do have some really lovely superior labor goodies. I actually don't have a Kaweco fountain pen. That's kind of funny. I do have, thankfully, this desk, which I am able to just journal on. Very grateful for that. Lots of metal clips to hold my traveler's notebook open. So that is definitely something that I do have. And I not only have one stationary storage box, but I have multiple now. So. That was just kind of a fun page that I wanted to point out to you and just the simplicity of it. Um, I do kind of miss this sometimes where really all I did was stick down a few stickers, stamped the titles and numbers, and I just wrote for the most part. This is an interesting one where I tried to like paint a little bit. I don't really know 
what I was trying to do with the spread actually looking back on it, but I did draw the Christmas gifts that I had received from family back in 2017. So it looks like we got a cold brew maker, a travel bag and wallet, and a gift card. And then I think I was trying to draw like a night sky background. And I tried to use some pens that I had to create these like stars in the background. Again, not really sure how that came through, but this stood out to me as something that was an interesting try. So I wanted to show you that as well. I also had a word of the week every time I journaled in here. So that's also interesting. That is not really something I do anymore, although I do like to have a word for the whole year now. And then this particular thing right here is a post-it note. I am out of these now, but it's one post-it note and I ripped it up and I used two thirds of it on this side and then the other third on the other side. So yeah, kind of interesting to look back and see what style I had and how I approached weekly journaling back then. So this is much more of a memory keeping spread it looks like rather than a creative to-do list which some of my earlier weekly spreads in this refill were more like to-do lists. Here it goes back to a to-do list again. This is March of 2018 and so I'm writing about how I need to edit pictures, write the draft of the blog post, proofreading, all of that fun stuff. And I think this, yeah, this is the uh, year where I went to PlannerCon back in 2018 for the weekend. And I just wrote a list of what I'm hoping for at PlannerCon, like meeting new people in the community, learning new things from the workshops, finding and buying some cute things. And I did bring some washi samples. I had like handmade cards of those with words. I don't know if anybody would even remember that on the internet, but I handmade these cards and I stamped out those with words and I wrote my Instagram and blog info on the back. I don't know why I thought I needed that. It was fine without, but um, I had fun making it. So that's kind of a fun memory. And I did want to bring a traveler's notebook with a specific refill. So yeah, just writing some things down there. So this is definitely a trip down memory lane for me. And that is my memory keeping insert from 2017 to 2018. And then here is the Bamkuhen GU insert. And I believe now it's a little bit different where the monthly and the weeklies are separated now. This I journaled in from January to June of 2021. And in the monthly spreads, I did the Hogunichi challenge. So I was pretty diligent about this in this particular refill. I did have a second refill where I sort of started it and then I kind of stopped because I had some wrist problems at the time. So I couldn't really do a lot of these drawings. But for the first six months of the year, I was pretty good. Well, I was pretty good at keeping up with them. I don't know if I was pretty good at like drawing these things, but this month, for example, was different flowers. So I really enjoyed drawing all of those in and I used colored pencils. It looks like I started out with watercolor in January and also in February, but then starting in March, I actually switched to colored pencil, probably because it was a little easier for me to work with and simplified some things. These are some fun characters for that month. And then the weekly pages I strictly use for memory keeping. So yeah, um, I put a lot of different things in here. This was one page I wanted to point out to you where I clipped this like monthly calendar from some things of mine. And there's a lot of like tippins here on this page of different like stamps and things and little papers and things. So I thought that was a really fun spread to show you. 
And then a little bit later down the road, this was actually the week when I got married. And so um, I have a really fun um, photo right here. It was early 2021, so we had a virtual ceremony. So that's why the two of us are staring at the laptop right there. And I don't know, just really enjoyed making colorful decorative spreads in here. By this time, I definitely had a huge increase in my collection of washi tapes as well as stamps. So I used those quite a bit and also my gel pens as well. So I wrote in a lot of those in this journal. And here I was still sort of discovering PET tape and other types of really big washi tapes. This is a really big piece of washi tape. So I remember posting and sharing this spread and someone had asked me if I had drawn this and I was like, I wish I had the skills to draw this because this is actually a piece of a really, really big washi tape. And it was just from a sample that a kind friend had shared with me. And this is just one of those spreads that I really remember clearly. I loved working on this and I really liked being able to merge all of these elements together. And I think the colors really came nicely together as well in this spread. So in terms of the weekly layout of the GU, I really liked that the Saturday and Sunday, the weekends were over here and it offered the same amount of space as the weekdays. And it meant that this part is empty uh, during the week. So you can use that for anything. And most of the times I ended up using it for like decoration or quotes or just different kinds of decoration, I guess I should say. Yeah, mostly just decoration, honestly. Or yeah, just like writing about little things, summarizing the week, things like that. Um, and yeah, I was still getting introduced to PET tapes, I think, around this time. So you'll see a couple pieces here and there, but I also did not have as many as I do now. So that's just a really fun way to look back on this super full refill. Again, this is the Bamkluhen GU insert. And that is what I used to memory keep in 2021. And now I'm just using blank inserts to memory keep this year. And I will say that I've been a lot more free with the way I memory keep now. I just kind of put photos wherever I want to and I write wherever I want to. This spread has to do with the Pokemon game. So I did a lot of writing here because I felt like it. And then other times I just stick in a bunch of ephemera, I letter a little bit, I decorate quite a bit as well with still lots of washi tape and even more PT tape than you've seen before. And yeah, that's pretty much it. These are just like things that I've bought, desserts I've enjoyed. And other times it's a mix of both. So I still have some tip-ins every now and then and just some commentary and it's just really freeing I think in terms of style. Sometimes I tip in a bunch of postcards like this that I received in the mail and that's one page and I think I wrote something underneath as well um, that was private but yeah I just paste in stuff and I wrinkle up receipts and I put it in here. I paint in it if I want to. So I think overall my style has really evolved to just being whatever I want it to be. If I feel like drawing, I feel like, you know, sticking something down, that's what I do. I don't really think about a cohesive style anymore throughout a memory keeping journal as much. And it's been a very refreshing and lovely feeling, which is why I am continuing to memory keep in blank refills that I still have in the traveler's notebook. So those are the three of my memory keeping inserts that I chose that I wanted to share with you today. And now let's go ahead and move on to the travel journals. In terms of travel journals, I'm only sharing two for a pretty big contrast. This is my most recent travel journal that I have also shared on this channel. And this is the Hawaii one. And this was my most recent trip. 
And then this one is my very first travel journal to Seattle, Portland, and later in the year to Vegas. So this is my very first travel journal that dates from, you know, September. This was the uh, Pacific Northwest trip. And then December to Vegas back in 2017. And um, yeah, again, like not a whole lot of decoration, lots of writing. I was pretty new to lettering back then. So I feel like some of my cursive needs a little bit of work, but I still had fun, um, you know, putting down these headings here. And I still was a big fan of using ephemera. So this is a page I wanted to show you because even though this is a much older spread, it kind of encapsulates how I see travel journaling. So there's some ephemera there, a sticker here from an ice cream shop. And then I tried my best to draw the troll. <laughs> I don't think it turned out very well. It actually looks quite funny to me. And um, I don't think it does it justice. And I just did it with some pen. It looks like I didn't even attempt it with pencil first, which is interesting because now I always go in with pencil first. But regardless, there's a little bit of drawing there and lots of writing. And I feel like this is sort of the way I still approach travel journaling, but just with more decoration and uh, washi tapes and PT tapes. This page right here has more ephemera. So there's this piece right here from the brochure. I sort of did this like divider thing with a pen just so that I could have a little bit more room to write or I can separate the sections of writing, I suppose. And this was like a stamp I got from the coffee shop. I might have cut this out from the cup. I can't quite remember, but yeah. And then I drew the drip coffee, but I just, I didn't really have any like watercolors or other supplies at the time. So I basically just used my mouth liner highlighter in gray and then my black pen. And that's all I used to draw this. So little fun things like that. I had very limited supplies back then and making use of what I had was really interesting. This is the later trip in the year to Vegas and it looks like I took a photo with my Instax but it didn't come out very well. I don't know why, maybe it just faded with time. I'm not sure, this part is all dark. It's kind of funny the way that looks, but. And I still had my Canon um, printer, the portable printer at the time, and I actually did use those. Um, nowadays, I prefer to just come home from the trip and I just airdrop all my photos to my laptop and I like to print them on matte sticker paper. But back then I still had the portable printer. I still have this, but I just don't use it as much anymore. So I printed those things there. Here's another card that I tipped in and lots and lots of writing. So again, this is my very first travel journal. It looks really different from the way I do things now, but I feel like only because I have fewer supplies here. And regardless of the supplies I had or didn't have, I remember really enjoying this process. For example, this page, I know it's not marked, but I wanna talk about it really quickly. I remember wanting to use this as like a pocket and I wasn't sure how, so I actually had to talk to my partner to kind of brainstorm this process, even though he doesn't really journal at all. And so I remember making like a little cutout here for these coffee cards. So that's a fun memory I have. So that is just like a very quick overview of my very first ever travel journal. And here again, very similar to memory keeping. I have been very free with the way that I travel journal. I am not afraid to take up space anymore. So a lot of my writing is way more spaced out than before where I feel like it was more scrunched up. I feel like I was like, okay, I have to fit this on this page, but now it's like, well, you know, this is one meal and I'm just gonna 
take a whole spread for this one particular meal. And here is the similar, you know, idea where I went to a bakery and instead of cramming everything into one side, I just decided to take a whole spread. And I remember really enjoying this particular bakery and I denoted some of my favorites by circling the name and putting like little stars next to it. So that was really fun. Again, I go into a lot of these details in my flip through video, which I will link down below. And here, a mix of PT tape, ephemera, and my own drawings of what I ate that day. And this page is actually quite simple. It's just like a couple of elements and mostly my drawing and just really quick names of what I ate. I didn't even really talk about, you know, how everything really tasted in detail or anything, which I feel like back in this travel journal, I might have felt more compelled to do that. But now I think travel journaling for me is just more about looking through my trip and just really picking out the highlights and writing about them. So it's okay for me that I don't necessarily remember every single feeling and every single taste super accurately. It's just kind of a looser collection of memories that's supported by ephemera, drawings, photos, and some of my writing. So yeah, I think... You know, the tip-in approach is very similar, but the way that I approach the writing part in travel journaling has been really loose and way less stressful for that reason. So I have enjoyed this quite a bit. And this was a week-long trip and it took up almost this entire insert. Whereas here, this was across three different trips. And the first Pacific Northwest trip was about a week and Vegas later was a couple of days. So I feel like I was able to squeeze in a lot more into one refill. But regardless, I think, you know, both approaches are really fun. And the way that I use ephemera and washi tape and headings and things like that across my pages, I would say are actually pretty similar across both. So that is an overview and comparison of my travel journals from, you know, the most recent travel journal to my first ever travel journal and also my memory keeping refills from this year, 2021 and 2017 through 2018. This one spans a little bit longer, but I hope you enjoy this video. It was really fun for me to kind of look back and see what has changed, what hasn't changed. I still love journaling. That fact has not changed and I will continue to share my pages with you on this channel. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Take care. Bye.